last time I ran the Berlin Marathon, the day before, on the shakeout, someone said I was too heavy to run fast. Unbelievable. Welcome back to the channel. It's nine weeks until the Berlin Marathon and I can't wait to do some marathon training and try and run fast in Berlin. Prove the doubters wrong, especially that man that said I was too heavy, too big to run fast. So the plan is to do things a little bit differently. Uh, if you want some background, I ran 2 hours and 24 in Valencia last December. I then ran 2 hours and 29 in London this year, which I was disappointed with. So this time in Berlin, hopefully I can go a little bit faster. I'm going back to basics. My training recently has been very much not marathon specific at all and instead I'm trying to get faster. The plan is run a fast 5k and then extend and convert that to a faster marathon. So I've been doing lots of threshold work, some faster work and I've just started doing some 5k races. So my first 5k was at the Southwest PB 5k last week. I'll show you how I got on in that in a little bit, but first I'd like to say thank you to Saw Running who are sponsoring this Berlin Marathon series. As you already know, I absolutely love Saw. The quality of the kit is just so premium, it feels so good on. Um, yeah, I love racing in it, I love training in it. So thank you to Saw for sponsoring this series. If you want to save yourself some money on some Saw kit, then use TWR15, which will save you 15%. If you've never tried Saw, then I can't recommend their kit enough. It feels so premium, it just feels so good on, and if you feel good, hopefully you'll run fast too. So yeah, if you want to try some Saw kit, use the code, and uh, thank you Saw for sponsoring this series. Right, let's find out how I got on in the race. All right, we are at Old Down Track. It is 5K tonight. Um, so yeah, training's been going all right. I'm looking forward to testing myself. Uh, the goal has been to bring my 5K time down, so hopefully, once I'm back into sub-15 shape, it'll put me in a better position to then do some marathon-specific training and roll the dice in Berlin. So tonight it's a little bit warm, a little bit breezy, but this will be a good test of my current fitness and how my training's going. I've gone with quite a patient approach, I think, in the last couple of months with lots of threshold work, with a sprinkling of faster stuff, and we'll see how that's paid off or not tonight. Uh, I'll have another few goes at 5k after this one, but this will be a line in the sand to hopefully build on in the next few races. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. There you go, Mark. No, 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 I didn't know if you just hold the pen in the mouth while they're doing the bit. Is it a life hack or no? Oh, no. Mmm, chocolate face. Circles and crocs. You're warm now. Okay, good. Can I get my vest? Why are you turtling? Maybe a wrong phrase. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> that's a new one for you. Yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> that's not like you. Yeah, go mess me today. Very mild on the Okay. I should say mess speed sky plus. Not edge. Not the edge. Never tried the edge. I'll tell you what, my shoulders are killing from swimming yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, Kelly dragged me to the pool. And uh, it was my longest swim ever, by like, quite a long way. <laughs> I've got doms. When I was second, Um, or the Welsh man. He's, he's up there, the big man. <laughs> he's not the big man, he's the Welsh man. <laughs> oh, he's up there. Keen? A bit warm, mm. but very excited. Yeah. Haven't run a 5k in two years, buzzing. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah, should, be, 
should be good. I've never run on this track before. Yeah. yeah a lovely tailwind going down there and a wicked headwind coming back this way. So we'll see how we do. Even so, even Stevens. I hope so. Yeah, good luck. Have a great race. Thank you. Go Dada. Go Dada. Did you enjoy? Yeah. Good. What was that, 15, 18? Something like that. Oh, God. Mama, I blew up massively then. Mama, but I felt so really good first couple of K. I just gave it a go. So you blew up? Yeah. Um, but no, I gave it a really good roll of the dice there. Um, I don't know why I felt so good so early on, like too good. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm just a lot fitter than I thought. But maybe I wasn't because I blew up. Um, but yeah, it was it was really fun. It's a decent time. It's quicker than it's not quicker than much. <laughs> it's a line in the sand there, and hopefully I'll go quicker in the next one. So my official time in the race was 15 minutes and 17 seconds, which I've got to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with. It's a good line in the sand for my first 5k, but I wanted to go a little bit quicker. Basically, if you want to run a fast marathon, your thresholds need to be in a good place. I've drawn a little graph. I'm going to explain exactly what I mean now. Here's my arts and crafts. I don't know if you can see this, so what I'll do is I'll take a screenshot and uh, put an overlay over my face. I'm going to try and explain my marathon strategy using this piece of paper which I've just drawn up. So hopefully with the help of this diagram I'll be able to explain my marathon training strategy and what I'm doing in my training at the moment. So I've got pace along the x-axis and lactate concentration along the y-axis. And as you'll see the red line shows the lactate and I've split it up into five zones. So if we look at zone one, just easy recovery running, easy running. Zone two is like the hype zone at the moment, which is easy steady. It's still really quite comfortable, but you just get a bit of a higher end aerobic benefit from it. And then we've got your LT1, which is equivalent to about your three hour race pace. Zone three then means you're using a little bit more carbs, so your lactate concentration increases a little bit. The lactate's still under control. And this is where lots of people do their threshold work. You've got your low end threshold and your high end threshold between your LT1 and your LT2. So when I'm doing double threshold days, I'm doing my morning session, really low end, trying to keep my lactate at about two to two and a half. And then I'm doing my evening session a bit higher, trying to be under four millimoles of lactate. So yeah, all in that zone three, just different paces. With the sessions, if you have recoveries and stuff, you can go even a little bit faster and still stay within, uh, within the lactate concentrations you're looking for. Just nice controlled threshold session. LT2 is your one hour race pace. As you start to use less fat and more carbs, your lactate concentration shoots up and then you're into zone four, zone five. Zone four is like your 10K effort type stuff and zone five is your hard, just I call it hard, but it's just like VO2 max type of work. So what I'm trying to do at the moment, I'm doing lots of double threshold and now and again doing a hard day, more threshold than hard, but mixing in the hard as well. For me, marathon pace is gonna be in that zone three. I'm looking for between two hours and 20 and two hours and 30, that sort of range of time. So for me, that is in the lower end of zone three. So why I wanna move my LT1 further up so that that lower end of zone three is a little bit faster. But I can't go past my LT2. I can't go to a, 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 a place where I'm burning so many carbs and producing all that lactate and other metabolites that slow you down. 
So in order for me to get faster at the marathon, I need to move both my thresholds to the right to get faster. The further right I go on that graph, the more carbs I'm gonna be burning. So I need to be taking on fuel, but also the more training I can do to move those thresholds means the less carbs, the more fat I'm oxidizing, which is what I need to be doing. If I'm gonna run fast at the marathon, I can't be running too high in that zone three. It can't be upper end threshold. It needs to be that lower end near LT1, just a little bit faster than LT1 in order to convert a fast 5K into a marathon. So currently my training is consisted of lots of double threshold. It's in that zone three, that, that controlled effort. By controlling the lactate and taking lactate readings, I've been able to do lots more of this work, um, a higher volume of threshold work than if I was doing harder threshold sessions or if I was doing VO2 max type work. Um, but yeah, in order to run a fast marathon, I need to increase my volume, I need to move my LT1 and LT2 to the right, and also try and be as fuel efficient as I can. So this, so in this series, I will be practicing fueling again. I'm not sponsored with, when it comes to nutrition, so it allows me to work with whatever I want. Uh, the last time I raced Valencia, I used maltodextrin in soft flasks, same as London. I'll probably go with a similar approach. Um, but maybe, maybe try some other things in training this time to see what works. Um, but I did run really well in Valencia using soft flask with maltodextrin mixed in with water. So I'll probably go with that strategy again. But I still need to train the gut to be able to take on enough carbs per hour so that I can convert the training into a fast time. According to Daniels, my 1517 converts to roughly a 226 marathon if I've done the right training, uh, which I haven't yet. Um, but I want to go quicker than that. I'm not going to set a time goal for, for Berlin, but I do want to just execute the best I can. With London, I set myself a time goal, and I think I got bogged down by trying to hit those splits and stuff. Well, what I'd rather do is just train really well, commit to the training, go all in, do the best I can, but then on the day, not even have a, a pace uh, in my mind going in. Just make sure that I execute I know what marathon feels like, I know what marathon effort is, and I knew at London that I was pushing a little bit too hard. I wanna go in with the same sort of approach I did for Valencia, which is just run at marathon effort, and the time will take care of itself. If I can execute, control the race well, I know that I can run a good marathon. So that's the aim for Berlin, um, is just to get as fit as I can and then execute. The plan for this block, which I'll be documenting on this whole marathon series on YouTube, is, like I said, fast 5K and then marathon specific work in the last six weeks. Six weeks isn't much. Um, it's a different approach to what I did in London, which was very much marathon specific from the start. But this is a different strategy because if I can't run a fast 5K, then how can I run the sort of marathon time that I'd like to? If my thresholds aren't in the right place, then what's the point in doing all the harder long runs? If if I'm never gonna be able to run at the right intensity and get the time that I would like. So yeah, in order to run the fastest marathon I can, I'm gonna try and move my thresholds to the right, get a bit faster, and then convert with the longer stuff. For me, there's three main things you need to concentrate on in marathon training in order to run a good marathon. Number one is you need marathon effort to feel comfortable. And in order to do that, you need your thresholds in the right place. For me, I'm gonna be just over LT1. If I'm gonna run a quick marathon, I need that to feel good. The second big thing that you need to address in a marathon to run well is fuel. The faster you run, the higher heart rate, the more you'll burn carbs. If you burn too many carbs, you blow up, you bonk, you hit the wall. In order to address this, you need to be able to take on fuel during the race. So for me, it's practicing, training my gut so I can take on a lot of carbs. But also, I need to be at an intensity that I don't burn too many carbs. Marathon effort needs to be a good mix of burning fat and carbs so that you don't bonk and blow up. And for me, the third aspect of a successful marathon block is having the body and legs conditioned to the pounding that the marathon is. So many people, it's not the fitness, it's not the carbs that holds them back, it's how their legs feel at 20 miles. It's just, uh, marathon is tough. Running 26.2 miles on the road takes it out of your legs and that pounding can cause so much stress that you can't finish strongly. So for me, to, in order to run that really fast marathon, you've gotta be fit enough, you've gotta be able to take on the carbs and be fuel efficient in your running at marathon pace but also you've got to be able to withstand the distance so that for me means big long runs in the last block I did Dublin marathon as a training run 
and the whole purpose of that was to condition the legs so the legs are used to that pounding. So yeah, those are the three things I'm gonna try and address. I hope you follow along. I hope it's not too geeky. Um, there's gonna be a few races which are always fun to watch. See how I get on in those. I've got a race tomorrow actually, Mago 10K. So that'll be the next vlog, see how I get on in that. But yeah, there's gonna be some races, there's gonna be some training, there's gonna be some double threshold, there's gonna be some big long runs. And hopefully, I can uh, run a fast Berlin marathon. Come on, let's go, all in for Berlin.